What happens when a young lady goes missing, leaving no trail, no clues, and seemingly no trace? A family is devastated. They turn to authorities, friends, and even the supernatural when leads are exhausted. In December of 1981, Dina McCann went missing while her family was away on vacation. A friend was the last person to see her alive. Her taillights, the last sign of her life, trailed away to the darkness of a cool California night. Forty years later, family, investigators, and a psychic medium with law enforcement background venture out into the same California darkness, looking for those lights to bring Dina home. Hi, my name's Scott. I'm a medium and a psychic. I'm also in law enforcement. I know these two things don't normally go together, but in this case, they happen to align. And I'm here to tell you the story of how I got involved in a 40 year old cold case. I'm gonna start you off by bringing you in the same way that I did. Here's the pretext to this recording that I'm about to play for you. I was contacted via social media by a man I've never met who lives 3000 miles away from me on the West Coast. He asked me to do a reading for his sister, or more accurately, of his sister. And even more accurately, he just sent me a photograph of a young woman and said, can you give me any information on this? And I said, I normally don't get involved with these sorts of things because I don't believe that mediums and psychics can solve missing persons cases or murders. And he said, anything that you might be able to provide to me would be very helpful. So do you think that you could just give it a shot? So I agreed to do the reading. I looked at the photograph, I took notes, and I wrote down anything that came to me. Now, if you don't know what a medium does, we connect people who are on the other side. And we're also psychic, so we can pick up other details of people's lives or the atmosphere they might have been in, uh, or other information that could just come to us, okay? Um, basically, I just said, universe, tell me what I need to know. And I wrote it down. Then I called the client, but here's where it gets even more interesting. I called him from a parking lot. I was out running errands when I did this. I wasn't even at home when I did it. It's odd for me to do that, but I was compelled. And I hope this helps compel you into the story because later on in this series, I'm gonna show you the parking lot that I called from and where this investigation ended up. And let me tell you something, there are no such things as coincidences in this world, folks, okay? So please, stay tuned for that. So what I'm gonna play for you next is the recording unedited. Now, listen to the recording, get involved, listen to the things that I tell you, and in the next video after this, I'm gonna show you more. So stay tuned, and if you haven't yet, Make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the follow button, and make sure that you hit the bell so that you know when I upload content. Ready, when you, when you are. So let me pull up my notes real quick. I'm gonna write here. So the first thing that had happened was I, I felt a very strong pull to both the desert and a forested area, which is very strange. Um, usually it's a very set location. Um, so I don't know if uh, she was moved at or where she went. Let's start with this because I'm going to give you some landmarks. Okay. First things first, I saw a stadium. Um, it was a very large stadium um, and it was like, I, I could tell that it was probably a place where they play sports or, or something like that, like major NFL uh, or baseball or something to that effect. And it, it felt very important to me about a location of where we would want to go look and start an investigation. Okay. Um, then I got a name that came up, uh, and the name was the name of a street. And I believe the name of the street was, uh, like, Brenda Way or Brenda Street or, or something to this effect. It was very strong, um, and I, I just couldn't shake it, so I know it was important to talk about. Okay. Um, let me look at this. Uh, the, what is this? Okay, 
Okay, so the person that I felt like was important to talk about, aside from your sister, was there was a male who looked to be about 40 years old, he had very dark curly hair at the time, and a very, very specific type of facial hair. Um, it looked like a mustache that, that grew from his top lip down to like his chin, kind of like an old fireman's mustache or like uh, a Fu Manchu, like a motorcycle rider back like in the day might have had. Um, like the handlebar mustache? No, it was the kind that like grows from the top lip and then would go down. And like if you grew a go- goatee and then shaved your chin but left the outside, you know that kind uh, of yeah, mustache? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. So it was uh, this white male uh, or light-skinned Hispanic male, dark black hair, dark mustache at the time. Um, and I saw him then, and then I saw him like much later and he was gray and I was looking at like a mug shot. So I believe that whoever may have been involved with your sister going missing was eventually apprehended for something else and or and incarcerated and possibly passed away in prison. Okay. Um, and I felt like this is somebody that in accordance with your sister going missing was somebody she might've known that she was with when this happened. So I felt like I was with somebody that I could trust, somebody that I met before, um, like somebody I would have met at church or a teacher or, or somebody in my life that was close. And then this person betray our trust and we're gone. Um, then, I, then I'm looking at, that's when I started seeing the stadium and the name Brenda Way as a street. Then uh, I keep hearing a lot of loud cars and loud exhausts. So it leads me to believe that um, she may be near. And I'm sorry to speak like this. I feel like I, I, I feel like she is deceased. I don't think that she's with us anymore. Um, I feel like she's near a place that is like a highway or a very heavily traveled road. Because as I start looking at the stadium, I can hear what sounds like a very busy highway nearby. Um, and um, what? A, oh, this is the other really important part. I was led down a path and the plat- path was like those big chunky gray rocks that they make driveways out of or like long pathways that are really dirty but you put the bluestone down and it keeps the the dust from coming up uh, i know you're talking about and then i smell a lot of earthiness after that um and that's what i i was feeling as far as like where i'm being led to as a location um and then from there uh, I felt like I was hit in the top of my head, and this is where the consciousness sort of stopped. Hmm. Um, so I don't know if there was anybody that was involved in this investigation that fit the description or was a suspect or um, that fit that male subject, but it, it's such a visceral-looking person to me that I, I have to say that that is somebody that was definitely involved. Um the only other thing that I could really tell you without really sitting down with you for an hour or two, um, oh, what is Did your sister get, like, a lot of nosebleeds or something? Do you remember this? I don't know. I was 10 years old, you know, but... You were 10? Uh, Are your parents still with us? No, but her mom, because my dad remarried, and her mom is, and so... Um, there's some, there's something she keeps telling me is like a, a proof that I'm connecting through her is she keeps telling me to talk about nosebleeds or like having nosebleeds. Somebody was important about that in her life. I'll have to ask my um, sister. Yeah. Um, so geographically speaking, do you, did you know if she lived anywhere near any, like a, a big stadium or is there something involved in that way? And so, I, you know, it's like, part of me wants to think that she lived near UOP, which is a University of Pacific here, but she, when she came up missing, she went to Sacramento to see her boyfriend, and then never came back. Like, she ended up missing between Sacramento and Stockton. Stock 
Stockton. So I don't know California that well, but it's about an hour drive, forty five minutes. So, because again, I don't know where any of this took place, but mm-hmm. once I saw that you were from California, I actually put in Brenda Way in California to see where it would pop up, and it's there is one, and it's close to. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers where uh, they play. Well, I mean, the, um, just because she, you know, that's where she was doesn't I mean where she ended up. Right. So that's that's where I think the, this is what I tell everybody who asks about this kind of stuff is, um, psychics and mediums don't solve missing persons, but good police work does and, and families who care do. Okay, so you heard all the details that I put forward. Now, to be honest with you, I haven't listened back to it, and I'm not going to until I'm ready to edit the next video. But I know the locations in my head of where these things happened. I'm going to show you on Google Maps, and then we're going to talk to Tracy, the woman from the private investigation team, who made sure that I got brought in and flown to California to help go to the very locations that I was picking up on in that recording and things are going to get wild we used paranormal investigation techniques we used regular old investigation techniques and we go to these different places and we try to contact dina mccann who is our missing girl okay so again if you haven't done it yet make sure you hit the subscribe button hit the like button Share this to your social media if you like. And also, don't forget to hit the bell so that you know when I have uploaded something new. I'll see you guys really soon. Thanks a lot. My name is Scotty the Medium. Also, you can follow me in all of my other social media places. I will see you real soon. Thanks so much.